experts for Central and Eastern mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, you were contracted by the Interreg Central Europe program recently to carry out a territorial impact uh, study. Um, what exactly did you analyze in this study? We analyzed basically the Interreg Central Europe program, um, focusing mostly on the period 2007-2013 and also to some extent on the, on the current period 2014-2020. Our focus was on three points. First, we analyzed 10 major challenges for the Central Europe area. Um, we did this in order to provide or to get some insights on, on future potential issues that may affect the area and where policy and especially transnational cooperation um, can have an impact and can basically make the life better of the people living in this area. The second part, we analyzed the impacts of the 2007-2013 program. Um, first, in merely quantitative terms, um, so we analyzed uh, what types and what number of output has been produced. Secondly, we also provided a qualitative analysis, looking at what and uh, how it has been produced. We also made some case studies and also a survey. And the third part, based on the analysis of challenges and the impacts, we gave an outlook um, still for the current period, what could be done, and especially then for the period 2021 to 2027, um, what could be a potential future focus of a Central Europe program. This sounds really interesting. Maybe we can uh, talk more about the 10 main challenges that yes. you identified for the Central Europe area and that will affect Central Europe in the, in the near future. Uh, I've seen from, from the uh, study that uh, among these challenges are globalization, digitalization, energy transition, environmental cha challenges, climate change. Um, if you ask me, these sound rather general and they can affect any region in Europe, all across Europe, all across the world even. So um, in your study, in how far uh, do you think that these challenges are specific for Central Europe as an area? Um, I think it rather depends on the challenge. Um, a, a very specific challenge to Central Europe is globalization and economic development. Because we can show and with our data and also our institute has shown in several studies that the Central Europe area, uh, including the northern parts of Italy and Slovenia, they form the industrial core of Europe, of the European Union. So you have to imagine that this area produces around 60% of total European or European Union um, value-added exports. Um, in manufacturing and especially also in high-tech manufacturing. So this is a highly important area for the for the European Union and it's also a major point of identification for this, for the Central Europe area. So this is uh, really highly specific. The second specific issue in, in my sense is transport. Um, this is based on the geographic position of Central Europe as it says, it's central, and because of this, it connects east and west. But so interestingly, also, which was for me interesting in the study, it also connects north and south, all the way from the east, uh, from the east sea to the to the Adriatic Sea. So it has a, a major role in connecting Europe, um, literally via transport roads. But also, I think, mentally, because uh, mentality in the northern parts and in the southern parts uh, to some extent different, also east and west. And that's, uh, um, from an integration point of view, a very important area. This is quite interesting because, um, as you know, that uh, Central Europe is not defined as a macro region um, in the terms of a macro region strategy. It's not covered by a sea basin strategy, obviously. Uh, it touches, as you say, north, south, east, west. Uh, so from what you say, I understand that even though it is not a macro region, you would say it's an area that belongs together, that uh, has certain features that make cooperation easier and uh, justify cooperation. Yeah. Um, macro regions are defined by geographic um, characteristics. 
But geographic characteristics not necessarily make you a functional region. A functional region, um, as far as I understood, understand it, is based on relationships, not on geographic proximity, but on, on what, rela what relationships you have with your neighbor and how strong these relationships are, uh, also compared to your relationships with others. And here we can show that the relationship within Central Europe are, of course, extremely strong. And this is based on, on the economy, on, on industry, uh, of course, um, very strongly relying, relying on Germany, but the latest 20 years have shown that uh, Central Europe has emerged as a manufacturing core because industry was growing there. And the interrelationships in terms of value-added chains and trade, they are, they are uh, enormous in this area. So this is why we, why we think it's, it's a highly functional area in this respect. In terms of uh, transnational cooperation, the financing is, is rather limited. Nevertheless, uh, the key aim of Interact Central Europe is supporting these linkages and connections you just mentioned. Looking at the 10 challenges, in how far can transla transnational cooperation help regions and cities to face these challenges? I think it depends on what you, what you mean with little money. Sometimes a lot can be done uh, with little money. This has been shown by several projects in the Central Europe uh, program, uh, especially related to transport. Um, I think, for instance, of the PATCO uh, project, which was the Baltic Adriatic Transport Corridor. So they did very important preparatory studies to get the Baltic Adriatic Corridor into the uh, Trans-European uh, uh, Transport Network program. Um, and I think they had a budget of around uh, 3 million and potentially were able to, to leverage uh, future investment of, I don't know, billions probably, if uh, it's really decided to, to um, construct infrastructure in this area and to connect this region. So this, uh, you can do highly influential things with, with little money. Um, another point is, which I very much liked in this Central Europe um, projects was that many of them also have a kind of experimental character. Mm, this transnational corporations and the projects they finance, they allow um, to find new solutions to, to old problems, to, to have ex uh, basically to have a sandbox or experiment where you can try out things. And this has been shown, and this was very popular in these pro programs. I think uh, in the 2007 to 2013 period, um, over 950 pilot actions have been launched. And, and many of them consisted of um, doing, um, doing new stuff or uh, showing local administration, regional administrations, some ways of, of how things can be changed in terms of energy saving, in terms of transport, in terms of uh, climate adaption and so on. So there was an ample field. It's uh, very interesting. As you know, the future of cohesion policy in the next decade is currently being negotiated on the European level. Sometimes it seems that cooperation in Central Europe is put at question. Why do you think that uh, cooperation needs to be taken or should be taken forward? What would be happening if cooperation was discontinued in Central Europe? Um, I think Transnational cooperation or cooperation in general is very important. Taking cohesion or cohesion policy seriously, um, in my mind, does not only mean bringing countries or regions closer together in economic terms, but also bringing people closing, closer together. And that is exactly what uh, transnational cooperation and other forms of cooperation uh, actually does. And that's why it is, it is highly important. For the future, um, as you know, it's also discussed to put uh, cooperation into the mainstream program of the structural funds. I still see a very important role for 
transnational cooperation. And this is exactly because of this experimental character. It really gives you the opportunity on a small scale to try out new things, which then could be put in the, into the mainstream program uh, with, a, with the support of a, a lot more funding. Um, so I think it's, it, it makes a lot of sense to, to keep it and, um, and, to, and to really be aware of the potential uh, this form of cooperation has. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramesh.